Hey guys, it's Sarah with Grassroots Evolution Tarot, and I'm here today to bring you a monthly message for the sign of Sagittarius for the month of September 2022. Keep in mind it's general, time is fluid, so take what you feel resonates for you, disregard the rest, go about your day. I know that no matter what messages come through, it's still up to you, your active free will, the choices you make, and the steps you take in your world to get whatever fulfillment it is you'd like to see. To me, that's personal freedom, it's personal power, and it's something that lies at the tips of your fingers and the soles of your feet. So use that power to do wisely. For all my subscribers, I love you, love you, love you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you guys for being here. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. If you feel like this resonates and you'd like to see more, please hit subscribe. Join the journey with me. I'd love to have you along the ride. So I'm going to take a moment just to call in spirit and ask, ask Archangel Michael, Archangel Metatron, my team of light, and any of my spirit guides and your spirit guides that would he be here for the in, like the highest good of the entire collective. <clears throat> Excuse me, I ask them to join us, and we're going to ask them to guide, guard, bless, and protect myself, this reading, and any of you who would ask for it, to use me as the clearest channel possible, delivering messages that are for the most far reaching of you, but for the highest good only, no second rate messages here today. So I have, first off, we have the Messages of Life Oracle by Mario Duguay, and I just want to get a little spiritual advice here for the month of September 2022. Messages for Spirit, please, what would you like Sagittarius to know? Okay, so we have a whole bunch again. I feel like these cards really wanted to talk with Taurus, and they really want to talk now. But live for life, I see here, but what fell flat up at first was hope. So I enjoy each moment of my life and put love in everything. I do. Love gives life to all things. I open my heart to this great power. I do everything in gentleness and kindness. Each thought is made of light. I love God, I love all beings, and I love myself. Henceforth, I live to manifest love and light for each soul everywhere. And that's, I think that's a really powerful mission as well that a lot of us are on along this journey is to bring love and light to those around us and to bring healing and kindness, right? To bring healing and kindness. So what I heard is as well, though, this doesn't mean you're actively going out and trying to heal people all the time, because not everybody's going to want that, right? Maybe you're a healer, and people come to you for this. But this could even just be the way you love, the way you treat people, you know, your essence and your being. It's just when we do things from an open heart and we do things of love, that spreads such beautiful seeds out into the world. Spirit's reminding you, because again, this is the first thing I've seen was not to give up hope. I cease to doubt my true nature. I no longer turn my thoughts towards the dark and negative parts inside me, the world of fear. I welcome life and hold on to my faith in God and God's love. I enter into the great school of life, steady in the face of all situations, because regardless of the darkness and fear, I know the light will return. There will always be infinite possibilities ahead for me. And sometimes when we're going through a really hard time, we we can find ourselves in kind of a darkness. And this is where you, we, you, we, we could all benefit from holding hope that no matter where we are or what's happening in our worlds, nothing stays the same. This is, per, this is not permanent, this is temporary. So I think that some of us, if we get into this hopeless loop, it's because we're feeling like this is permanent. And Spirit's reminding you, no, it's not. But that there's so much more possibilities when we can hold hope for the future and hold hope for something that we can't see, right? We, um, I feel like it's, it's, when we hold hope, it's, it's letting go of those little nigglings, right? That say you're not enough or you're not going to have enough. And just what I heard is letting go and let God, in this case, it's letting go and letting know that source, spirit, God, creator, there is a plan in motion and things are going to work out in your highest favor and I keep I got again brought here to this great school of life we're learning along the way so consciousness is also here I'm conscious of each thought and feeling that I manifest are these energies constructive or destructive as my inner consciousness is reflected in my surroundings, I overcome my inferior emotions and negative thoughts to leave room only for those that are pure. I am mindful of what I create in this universe. In this way, I become an expression of the divine light. So we have the inner sense, <clears throat> forgiveness, unity. 
unity, attaining peace, no limitations. So I want to read forgiveness to you, and um, they're saying unity. Now, this is where we need to stop doubting ourselves and stop doubting that inner voice that's telling you what to do or telling you, um, you know, unless you <clears throat> have like a mental health disorder or something and those little voices aren't aren't our friends, but if your inner sense is telling you that, let's say school, okay, I'm getting like school. I'll give you an example of myself and maybe something you guys have experienced. <clears throat> when I first went to school, I thought that psychology should be my major. I really wanted to do that. And had I stayed that course, right, be like, no, even though I hated the class, I did not enjoy myself. And, you know, I, I realized second year when I had to clear my major, women's studies was in sociology. I had to do a double major to be able to do a four-year women's studies program, so I chose sociology. But the two of those things, they kind of went so hand-in-hand hand together that it just kind of brought the experience. But had I decided that whole time, no, I'm going to stick it out and do these classes they hated, I would have been going against my inner sense that said, no, you don't like that, that's not for you. And... You know, there's these things on those turning points and those little things where we listen to our inner selves. Had I not listened to that niggle, I wouldn't be the person I am today. I wouldn't have had the experiences I've had. And my mind was so open. And I feel like in so many ways here, this is where they're like, you need to do what comes for your heart. Because I think as well, many people may look at somebody, you know, taking sociology because they want to change the freaking world as, um, like wishing I would have taken psychology. There's money in that, right? But the thing is, when your heart is taking you somewhere, there's reason and there's value in that. And what I heard is you're a very valuable resource. So unity, we are all one in this interconnected grand scheme of things in this world. Maybe, you know, you're you're meant to do something, go somewhere, and meet someone. You know, I know for myself, had I not done, you know, had not made that little change, there would have been so much knowledge and different ways of thinking that I think I would have missed out on. So, today, I become one with my inner light. I live in the present moment and stop trying to defy time. I no longer react according to my fears. There will never be a valid reason for me to stray from my own inner light. I become calm and regain the lightness of my spirit as I connect to my inner self, center in my heart, and glow in all my divinity. So what I'm hearing too is if we're going to ignore our inner sense, if we're going to ignore the parts of us that knows where we're supposed to go, what feels good to us, what feels off to us, and go against our intuition, we're probably going to struggle finding peace in our worlds. And I feel like as well what I'm hearing is like people pleasing and some of us if we have trauma bonds or um, even difficulty for some of you what I heard is standing up for yourself because you end up, things get twisted, and you end up always apologizing after you stood up for yourself, right? Because what I heard is, as well, your abuser or the people around you, it it works better for them to do that, right? Because it took so much for you to stand up, so all it's going to take, they feel like, is one swipe to knock you back off, um, you know, whatever you've been working on. But there's these points where when we finally look in our mirror, right, and go, I'm so worthy, and it doesn't matter. When when I say this, I'm not going to apologize. Stand firm in some of this, my friends. If you are having trouble attaining your peace and there's people around you um, who are, what I heard is they're blocking your hope, who are trying to steer you in the opposite direction of where you know your heart lies. And I feel like it's very disrespecting to you. It's a disrespectful energy. Um, because there's things where I've heard is everybody can have their their ideas, right? Everybody can have their opinions. But when it comes to how you want to live, if you say, like if they're trying to push you another way, you know, this is how I'm going to live. 
It's not their choice. It's not their life. It's not... They weren't born into your meat suit. You were. So for some of you, I really feel like um, as we as we start working into peace, I'm going to read this, but as we start working on even our own selves, because this is talking about I look within myself and I stop blaming the outside world for my misfortunes. There could be people around you who you have put a lot of blame on, but here's, it's like, they may definitely not be innocent. Okay, what I heard is they're guilty as shit. But the thing is, if we allow their behavior to take us and stray from what what we would want to do okay so what I'm hearing too is like if you've been on um, like healing from some sort of eating disorder or if you're on a weight loss journey if you are even if it's a different something else that there's been an addiction to like cigarettes right if someone knows you're not smoking and they come up blow it in your face and go want one you know it's kind of like why right this is also like those people that um, knowing that you may have food sensitivities or that you um, are trying to, you know, reduce, you know, your weight and they bring stuff they know is irresistible to you or they say, well, one won't hurt, one won't hurt. Well, if you're recovering from, like, binge eating or something like that, well, one really could hurt because as soon as you get that taste in your mouth, you're fine without it, right? But as soon as this is this is coming towards you, and I heard like there's some things where it's we need to figure out like are we gonna let someone sabotage us? And if we did eat the, a piece of one bite, knowing that we still have control of ourselves on how we live the rest of the day. It's so through my searching and my efforts to gain purity, I transform myself. The material riches that I have acquired are not important. The riches that I will discover within myself are all that matter. Step in, step by step, in my spiritual quest, I free myself, I rise higher, and attain true inner peace. And there are no limitations but what you put on yourself. I'm hearing as well, like, boundary up, my friends. Boundary up, because there could be people around you, again, when you put your boundaries up and you state, you know what, like there's a way I want to live and it's a, it's my right to do this and if you get pushed back still there's nothing there there there's this place within yourself that once we get to that what I heard is that level of not giving a fuck but you do give a fuck it's just choosing our battles to be like you know what you do not need to continue because what I heard is browbeating right if you you guys have both you've had the conversation and then we continue and continue and continue it's a manipulative tactic it's called browbeating essentially because they've you've said no and they just keep going until they get a different answer that is not a way to live so i also feel like it's really going to be important in terms of this attaining peace to keep this unity within yourself to keep the light within yourself and not to allow the darkness of others to hinder or infringe on that so I have the zombie tarot, and I'm going to grab a few messages here today as well, my friends. Let's see what we have. Please, messages for Sagittarius for September September 2022. What messages would you have for anyone watching? The guy is good as well, of course. They want to fly to the floor today. The bottom is the six of hazards coming back into balance. Um, but there is an importance here as well. What I heard is tactics. And they have this zombie sure chained here, mowing the grass, all's right in the world, but we're dangling something in front of them. So who's that? Is it really saving you time? Right? What I heard is it's saving this guy. He doesn't have to push the lawnmower. Um, but it is like, also he's mowing the flowers. What fell was death in the reverse and the four of swords. Somebody here, because with this Four of Swords, this Four of Swords is he's resting from the fight, but things may be still going on the mind. And I think that in a lot of cases here, again, with this um, Six of Hazards here, and the what I heard is luring, right? It's like chained here, doing a job. For some of you, maybe your job, you really just are completely sick and tired of being treated bad at work or having people think that there's like I heard superiority complex or something like that but 
feel like whatever it is that is causing you anxiety, if there's a confrontation that needs to be made, one thing I heard is talk it over with your friends or talk it over with somebody outside of a situation. What I heard is for some of you as well, especially if it's friends within that workplace or friends within this group, be careful who you talk to. We have the two of swords it's at the bottom in reverse because I heard wolf in sheep's clothing, the snake in the grass, that person that you think you trust. They're playing both fields. I think it's really important here, um, again, where some of us may want things to go back to normal so bad, or somebody's wanted things to go back to normal for them because it's created a stable environment for them, but it's causing trauma for somebody else. So, for some of you, if you have been considering, and this is just the message I'm hearing, okay, if you've been considering leaving a relationship or um, a situationship, some of you I heard a family ship. Could, um, they're, they're playing in my head. It's Shine Down. I made a song called Second Chance. And there's lyrics and it's like, tell my mother, tell my father. <clears throat> I've done the best I can to make them realize that this is my life. Um, and sometimes goodbye is the second chance. It does, it's not to be mean. But it's like, there's other moments where... It's a second chance for you. It's a place of healing. There's these moments when separation comes back. Is it still the same shit? Or has it changed and evolved? Um, somebody, what I feel like for real, someone's got some real control issues um, around you or in your life. And what I heard is the claws. I saw like a cat retracting claws, almost like... Um, It may be hard, okay, and there's some breaking free from these situations might kind of feel hard at first. It may feel like, because again, if, if there's a trauma bond, this is something that we're used to. And um, what I heard as well is this could always flip-flop or you're not quite sure what you're going to get. So you could feel like... Um, everything's going really, really well, and these, pe you know, people get, and this could be where it's hold that hope. A lot of people get to where, um, they can't enjoy being happy because they think that as soon as they're happy and comfortable, something bad's going to happen. This partly is a self-fulfilled prophecy, but many of us who've ever felt like that, it's because we've ended up either being raised in an abusive or narcissistic household who've been dated someone who's done this to us and it's emotional abuse right somebody who it may take out their emotions on you somebody who may lash out right you use you as the emotional punching bag um, and many of us empaths we see so much good in people we can understand what's going on but the thing is they, it doesn't give them a right to treat you like shit because they have something going on in the world, much like if somebody else, you know, days where we may, everybody in their world has probably taken out frustration on someone, and that's unfortunate, but it's a point where it's how we deal with it, when we say, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, you really didn't deserve that, this was my own stuff, and I apologize for the way that it came out, and I'm going to work on this going further. It's when we see our patterns, that's consciousness. That's bringing conscious awareness to everything that happens in the world. That's peace and that's freedom. And I feel like it's going to be really important just to watch with your own consciousness. If someone around you tries to gaslight you or tell you that what you're seeing in your world isn't the truth, they're trying to manipulate you. The bottom, I want to show you guys, but gold and silver violet flame dragon transmutes the old around you with wisdom and grace, it's time for transmutation, magic, and healing. Offer service under grace it was at the bottom there. This is the Dragon Oracle by, I think it is Diana Cooper, if anybody's interested. Um, they're saying take your power back because here's where I'm going, and I, got, I always get rambles on off track here, but Spirit's really like channeling today. When you do the hard things, and for some of you this is going to have to go completely no contact. Um, they're telling me, so if it's you, if it's not, this or not. Um, for some of you, what I'm hearing is you may need to block emails. They're saying be kind of 
a little bit weary. They're saying suspicious, but weary of new friend requests on Facebook or um, messages on Instagram or wherever. Be careful of duplicates of your own friends adding you as well, because what I heard is spies. Maybe network spies, or you also have what I heard is flying monkeys for a narcissist. So it could be the narcissist or the person themselves that once you kind of stop the flow of information, they feel like they can't control you because they can't say, oh no, no, that's not a good idea, don't do that. They can't stop you from doing what you were doing, so they are trying to find out from your friends or other people. And if those people as well don't have that information, this is also what they could do, just try to stalk you in another way. So it could be, again, blocking emails, blocking and locking up profiles. Um, there's more. Locking your house when you're not home, and especially at night. Not to freak anybody out, I'm just, this is what I'm hearing. Because also, you don't know what kind of freak bag. Um, what I heard, and some of you, what I heard is, again, like if, if this is coming, like, if you need to, get the police involved. Don't call 911 I heard as well if um, if this person does come to your house and they won't leave call 911 if they're outside yelling threats and whatnot after get it on record um, so many people as well when it's not when it's not said when nothing's done about it as well they're, they will continue and unfortunately the way our justice system is in terms of domestic violence it's kind of sickening on both sides whether whoever it is um, but especially when it comes to intimidation and if you live in Canada coercive control they are working on getting that under the criminal code or criminal yeah I think so like to be able to be charged because it is emotional manipulation so no matter where you are it's abuse if someone is saying that if you do this, then I'm going to hold this back, or if there is a string attached to something, and it is that we're let you, if it's money, if it's financial, if it's sexual, if there's any sort of, um, you can only have this because of what I give you, or if I don't get what I want, you don't get what you want, which is kind of going to be where you're going to fall in line just to make sure that whatever needs you have are met. Or it could even be withholding love, withholding affection. If you don't act and behave in the ways that they think is ladylike or in the proper manner, they're going to withhold things and put you down. Over time, this kind of shit can destroy people. It, this is where it's important to see it in our own worlds. If it's happening, if we see ourselves engaging in that behavior, I think, again, it's going to be really important. What they said is document, document, document. If you're in a situation um, and for some of you, if it's dangerous, this is again, you need to find a way to seek help. And I heard um, not that it, you can't just be go to their parents or their family, your family, and say it. If you've already done this, if you have never told anybody, then by all means do this. But if you've told your family, if you told their family and nothing's being done, this is what I heard is law enforcement needs to be involved because it's about protection for you and your children and as well as this is outside of that but when you finally end that there is some sort of record that they've done this they're not who they appear to other people I think it's important that many of us have protected an abuser in our world I know I have um, If it's something that's going to continue happening, though, and there's where, at the time, I had a lot of fear for myself, right, and what, what was going to happen to me as the consequence if I said anything because I was involved in this altercation, right, I was in a different country, what was going to happen to me? I think that there's, that's a feeling we all have is what is going to happen to me? They're, they're giving me a, like, you know, this image, too, of that perfect covert narcissist who walks down the street and everybody thinks it's sweet and nice. 
but behind it is a fucking facade. Know that people see that. They're telling me, um, women's shelters, if you're a man, I don't know if you're able to get into women's shelters with domestic violence hotlines. Fuck, if you need to, call Kids Helpline. Call 911 um, if you are in immediate danger. Again, so the message I have here is orange gold dragon from Arcturus. Opens you to knowledge for the new golden age. Carry the energy of the future. Be a guiding light. As we move away and burn away things from the past that are no longer meant for us, we are being the torchbearers and we're carrying this light. Many of you, whether you know it or not, again, I heard you're the light bearers, you're the torch bearers. So, also, a lot of the places where, you know, refuges, let's say, for whether you are homeless and you need a place to go, or if you are in an abusive relationship and you need to get out and go take your kids to a shelter, or if you are hungry, wherever, people that are running those programs, people that come, came up with those programs, a lot of them have been in it too. So I feel like as well, they are really good people to talk to, but they can also get you in touch with counselors as well to help work through a lot of the things that, that are going on. Um, I'm not ending on a very happy note, and not all readings are happy. This one is very serious. Hold hope, my friends. Keep climbing that climb. Keep doing the hard things because you got this and you're strong enough. And use your voice and make it hurt. One thing I also heard, and this is the last thing I'm going to say though, is even if, unfortunately, you know, you've reported this and nothing happens, or if you choose not to press charges, or they may, right, and that's a real fear, I understand too, on reciprocation on what could happen, right, when they are not charged and nothing is enforced, right? This needs to be something that you bring up to your law enforcement as well as, oh man, um, so what they're reminding me is if you report it, it's on file. If it happens again and someone else says this happened to me, it's going to, it, it cooperates, and you may end up, right, like having to go back, but at least it's something that it's your call, right? Anyway, I love you all. I wish you safety. I wish you love. And um, if this wasn't your reading, it's not your reading, but if you do, if you're out and about and you witness, you know, just acts of unkindness in the world, it's, it's our, our mission as light warriors, what I heard it is, to do our due diligence as well and to speak up for people. So that's what I got. I love you all, and I will talk to you later. Bye, guys.